All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the steel capital of the world, Pittsburgh, PA, and Heinz Field. Tonight, on this fine Thursday night, we've got a good one in store between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Pittsburgh Steelers. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Roethlisberger on first down. And got his man complete. Antonio Brown kiss him goodbye. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Antonio Brown, 73 yards. And the Steelers have taken a first quarter lead. And that time, he came out of the slot for that big play downfield for the score. I think what we just saw there, partner, was what we call scheming a guy open. Put him in the slot, know that he has tremendous speed. What you're doing with your other receivers is likely running shorter routes to draw the attention closer to the line of scrimmage to give him a chance to get downfield and turn it into a one-on-one -on -one route, often against the safety. You like your odds when he's running against the safety. His speed usually wins, and it did on that play. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Returnable here for Davis. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Out now the Chiefs offensive unit ready to do battle again. here on first down it's complete to Chris Conley and he's brought down it's a gain of 11 yards that time and it produces a new set of downs and there they went crossing route against the zone defense what do you think of that it takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone sometimes you're throwing it between the zone sometimes the receiver's going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there it's a tough read but when they're in sync it's really effective if Jamal Charles plays here in 2016, I think five was the operative number for him. Five 1,000-yard years before last season, but only five games played in 2015. For the current Chiefs all-time leading rusher. Ready, ready, ready. On first and 10, Smith. He's got time in the pocket. And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Second down, Jamal Charles. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll be a loss of one, and that's going to lead to a third and 11. Well, on that play, the expression, don't blink, you might miss something, certainly applied. That was fast. Defense diagnosed the play, and it was over in a heartbeat. Will the defense dial up the pressure? Let's see. Third and 11. Ready, ready. Throwing on third down, Smith. He's got time, and he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. So here's Dustin Colquitt now to punt this away for the Chiefs. 
Back deep for the Steelers, Antonio Brown. He gets it away, and I think they'll smartly play keep away here from Brown. No returning this one. It sails out of bounds, and they'll spot it right at the 20. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And last time, the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That Maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly how you want to draw things up, whether it's on your grease board, right, in your playbook. One play drives exactly what you want on offense. What they have to be careful of is not having a letdown. It was really easy last time. They can't expect that going forward. And we'll see if it's that easy here. And, oh, a little spin cycle. Room to run now. The 40, the 30, and he makes it all the way down to the 13-yard line. A big play that time for Pittsburgh, 67 yards. And the elder statesman with a big run. He's hit that dreaded 3-0. He still can churn it. I love the way you treat him with respect. Respect. Elder statesman. You didn't just call him an old guy or anything you like an that. you an elder statesman. I love the way he can still play. Talk about running it with savvy now. A man from Tiny Liberty. This is Fitzgerald Toussaint. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Partner, I know that Andy Reid is an offensive guy, but he's got to love what he's seeing from his defense. How about eight takeaways <laughs> against the Jets? Seven of them on defense, one of them with special teams, six interceptions. How about my man Derek Johnson? He rolled back the clock on that interception return for a touchdown, didn't he? He did indeed. I just shot eight turnovers. I, when I saw it at first, I just thought there's no way that can't be true. And I don't know who's going to keep testing Marcus Peters on the corner, but you might want to give it a rest. His last two games, two interceptions in each game. All defenders get tired of hearing about their lack of hands and why they're playing defense instead of offense. But in this situation, it was the hands that made the play. Batting the ball away on an attempted touchdown pass, excellent job, way to knock it down. On third down, Roethlisberger looking for someone to throw to. And he's gonna take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Darius Hayward Bay, a 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Steelers find a way to stretch their lead. It took them a while to get their speedster involved, but they found him downfield there. And what we've discovered as we've watched games is the speedster doesn't have to have a lot of catches, doesn't have to have volume in order to have a huge impact on the game. His speed scares the heck out of defenses, and other guys can capitalize. But when you finally hit him and he carries it all the way into the end zone, that's what you're paying him for. That big threat that can make big plays on a limited number of catches. That's how you step on the stage with your first catch. Take it to the house. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. And now here comes Kansas City. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut it, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, Hey, listen, if some guy, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. And now here comes Kansas City. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. Out of the gun, Smith. And that is incomplete here. He was trying to get it off to Jamal Charles there. And it'll make this a second and long. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. Hey, 
Play fake for Charles. Now Smith. And he'll be hit from behind and taken down. Stephon Tewitt, the former Notre Dame man, in there to drop him. And it'll be a loss of about eight. Big sack on second down. Now the offense needs to convert here on third. From the gun, here's Smith. He's going to go deep for Conley. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Chris Conley, the intended receiver. And that's going to make it fourth down. I know the initial focus was on how far that pass was downfield, but how about the coverage on the play? Able to stay with him, get his hands where the receiver's hands were going to try and catch the ball, tips it up in the air, and knocks it away. Now Brown. Oh, shifty. Whoa. 21 yards. Well done on the return. Now the Steeler offense, they're set up nicely as they take over. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right, to be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. Now a play fake here on first down. Going up top and unable to connect on the long pass. It falls down incomplete. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown looked pretty good. So they'll be hoping to do that once more. And it takes me back to when we sat with the offense coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan and thought there were some holes in the defense. And they exploited them the last time out. Let's see if they can come back and put together a similar drive. And we'll see if they can do just that. Now it's Roethlisberger. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. No gain on the play there. It'll be second down. Now the old pass completion for no gain, not something you want to call up out of the playbook too often. Yeah, most offensive coordinators don't have that on their play sheet, so they've got to go back and scramble after this one. But right now, with what they're telling receivers about making sure you take care of the ball in open field, sometimes the fighting for extra yardage doesn't come as a result. That and good tackling can lead to no yards gained. Looking left side, it's complete. He's got it. 20, 10, 5, and into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Their dangerous wide receiver, 57 yards. And the Steelers are going to add on to their lead. Well, Brandon, if we go back to our meeting with the offensive coordinator, he showed us his script, didn't show us everything now. He said, here's the script for the game. I think everything's going according to plan in a big way. Three drives, three touchdowns. Yeah, that's about as good. As, that is as good as you can do, I guess. So, well done. Yeah, well done indeed. Tremendous execution. And now here comes Kansas City. And last drive, three and out. Still a goose egg on the scoreboard. How do they break that goose egg? They've got to find a way to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers, get them some space, and try and make a first down and get some momentum going. It's been a struggle for them throughout the game, and that three and out on the last possession, that told you just how stalled they are on offense. So who will step up here? We'll see. And Hill with it over the middle. And he's brought down. It's a pickup of 19, and it'll give the Chiefs a first down. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-arm guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. The first down carry here for Charles. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at him turn. Jamal Charles, nobody in front. And all the way in for a Kansas City touchdown. Jamal Charles, 56 yards. And the Chiefs are able to cut into this lead. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Now, 
after the touchdown. Here's Santos to kick this one away. On the return, here's Justin Gilbert. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. They begin the drive with Williams. And he'll slip his way up across the 30 to the 32. A gain of three, second down. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run and it was stopped by a second level player. Set. Like 20, like 20. Again, it's Williams. Found a little room there as he's up to about the 37. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. And very little room to maneuver. He'll get this down to about the 39. Well, it wasn't so much that it looked like the offense was threatening. They were. I mean, they had great field position, but how about the defense on that one? Huge stop on third down. It wasn't just a stop. Look at the loss of yardage, and it changes the play calling and the thought process for the offense now. Big time play for the D, and now they have the advantage. And the yellow flag hurts this offense, and now they face a tough third down. Hurry up, let's go. Black 20. From the gun on third down, it's Roethlisberger. And he locates Wheaton complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. You know, when I see passes like that, I'm reminded of something you and I talked about yesterday. Big Ben was a wide receiver the first three years of high school, sitting behind the coach's son, and then he finally got that opportunity. I think he's made the most of it. It's always the coach's son, isn't it? <laughs> but you know where it helps him? When he looks downfield, he knows what the receivers are going to do. He actually has wide receiver's eyes when he's throwing the ball. Looking left side, he's got it complete. And he's brought down. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Now Roethlisberger on first down. Wheaton with a catch right side. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. But that's what you're looking for when you're wanting to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Throwing now, Roethlisberger on first down. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. Again, it's Roethlisberger. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Give him nine on the play, and that'll make it third down.
Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. And an extra DB here for the Chiefs on third down. Pass situation. Third and two. Now Roethlisberger. And a quick throw here. That's complete. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. And now with that completion, he's north of 200 yards here in the first half. And he's going to break our statistician, Marvin, isn't he? Because <laughs> Marvin right now is just tallying it up. Hope his hand doesn't hurt too much doing this or keeps hitting the calculator. But my goodness, what a start he is off to. By the end of this game, he could have monster numbers. He just wants to continue to be accurate. Ben to throw again. Finding time. And not able to get it that time. He'd hit on six straight passes. Not there. Second down. I think that's a big time play there because the slant route is really hard to cover because the timing is so quick. But able to see it, diagnose it, and get to the football, that's why he's able to bat it away. Now this will be the ninth play on this drive. Back, here we go. Back, back, back. Throwing again, it's Roethlisberger. Surveying the field. And he just chucked that one out of bounds, out of everyone's reach. Maybe a wise call not to take a sack in this part of the field. It brings up third down. And nobody was open downfield there. Looked like a pretty clear throw away. Yeah, definitely was that. I'm wondering why there wasn't intentional grounding. I know they're saying there's a receiver there in the area. Those darn quarterbacks, they get away with everything. <laughs> Spoken like a true defensive back. Did, did, did that come out? It did. Oh, okay. And caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. With Darius Green from three yards out. And the Steelers find a way to stretch their lead. I heard a coach talk about those late in the half scores, especially ones that give your team a pretty decent cushion. He said those could be the ones that could finish off a squad if you let them. Yeah, they've got the cushion. This half has been theirs. well now to kick it away after the touchdown. Returnable here for Davis. Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And the Chiefs now getting set to go. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. They'll start the drive with Jamal Charles. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Here's the Kansas City offense now as they get set to take over. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Three yards to go here on second down. They'll keep it on the ground with Charles again. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Set, ready, ready, ready. On first and ten, Smith. 
And that is incomplete. So 17 seconds now on the clock here. Second and 10, Smith again. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. Albert Wilson, the intended receiver there. And it'll be third and 10. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Throwing on third down, Smith. Incomplete, and we're down to eight seconds now. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and then just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. Here's Dustin Colquitt now as he's on to punt for Kansas City. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. The Steelers offense now, they head back onto the field. And you got to think, if this is anything other than just taking a knee, I'd be very surprised. Yeah, they've got enough to talk about at the half. Why do anything else? Let's get out of there. And with time running down, they go down to a knee. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry, returnable here for Davis. Oh, nice move. Here comes the Chiefs offensive unit as they'll have it to begin quarter number three. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But, but this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, and you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set them up. So the offense now dealing with a second and seven. Charles the lone set back. Here's Smith now on second down. To the right side, it's Kelsey. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. So still in search of the first down after that last completion. An extra defensive back in the game now here for third and four. A shotgun snap for Smith, and he's got his man. That's Macklin. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Call it a gain of seven, and it gets him a new set of downs. And that's understanding where the markers are because it's not just running to them. Because on the catch, you could actually be pushed back before the first down. He's getting past it and allowing that opportunity to drift back towards the first down line and still having picked it up. Really well run. Now a play fake here on first down. And there's a flag on the field. And complete. This is Albert Wilson. I really don't know where to go with this one. He caught the pass, but in the opposite direction towards his own end zone. That's not one you get every game. Flag first and 20 now. Cover, Following the penalty, here's Charles. 
And there's a flag on the play. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. I don't know about you, partner, but I just came out of my chair. Big time run right there. And all of a sudden, I realized... Didn't reach the chains, did he? <laughs> How do you go that far? Create that type of an explosive play that'll be a check and a plus on every grade sheet and still not get a first down. Yeah, they had put themselves in a bad spot, but a big gain, that helps. Smith will hand it off here to Charles. Jamal Charles, nobody in front, and all the way in for a Kansas City touchdown. Jamal Charles, his second touchdown of the night, and the Chiefs are able to draw a bit closer. Now he's doing his part, but still facing a sizable deficit. And he would like to do more, but he needs help from the other two-thirds, right? He needs his defense to bow up a little bit, and he also needs special teams to maybe create some big plays and help them get back in it. To the touchdown here, Santos to kick this one away. Here comes Gilbert. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24 yard line. Time for the Steelers' offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. Start the drive on the ground. It's Williams. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. And give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down. You're set up very well for the rest of the drive. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Now Roethlisberger to throw on second down. And caught right side, Green. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Okay, when the big guy runs a corner route, you're asking a lot, no matter who's covering him. Doesn't matter whether it's a linebacker or a defensive back. Yeah. He usually has the advantage because of his body type. They'll come out in the pistol. Now Roethlisberger on first down. Over the middle here to Brown. It's a gain of seven, and it'll make it second down. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. Second and ten. It's Roethlisberger once more. Hayward Bay has it over the middle. And they do stop him, but he takes it all the way to the two. 
He's played a great game. It continues right there, even with this lead, confident to throw the pass and have the reception made. There's no doubt who the leader of their team is, is there? There's no doubt who they want to ride all the way to the finish because strategy would tell you run the football, run the clock down. Instead, they're letting him throw it because they feel that confident in what he's getting done. He's got time in the pocket. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. A great read, and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And now here comes Kansas City. And they're going to need another score. Got one last time, but still down here. When you're playing catch-up, every possession becomes crucial, doesn't it? It's vital. Get back out on the field, punch in the end zone again. They know it's not easy. But what they do have going for them, they did score the last time. They think they've got a good formula working. And what about the defense? Well, now you're just saying to yourself, okay, we gave up a score last time. What adjustments do we need to make to slow them down now and get the ball back for our own offense? Is it more pressure? Is it more zone? What do they have to do? They're trying to figure that out themselves. We'll see if they can figure that out right here. On first down, Smith caught Kelsey left side. And he'll get it up here this time to the 21. A gain of four on the play, and that'll bring up second down. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. On second down, here's Smith. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Defense sinking pass. They've got the nickel set out on third and six. Throwing on third down, Smith. And able to find Conley. It goes for a gain of 10, and it's a first down. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. They come up in an empty set. Four wide receivers, one tight end. Smith on first down. Over the middle, it's Thomas. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. Call it a pickup of seven, and it'll be a second down. And this time they go underneath for a simple pitch and catch. And not only do you get the pitch and catch, Brandon, but you're able to keep the receiver moving when you hit him with the drag route. Again, Smith. It's brought in by Harris. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. And here comes play number six on this drive. First down, it's Smith. Over the middle here to Wilson. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. That looked like a pretty good route combination there because you've got to find a way to clear the guy running the drag. Because when you do, you just put the ball on him and then let him run. Yeah, he's got some space. On first down, Smith. They complete it to Hill. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. Now, after the completion, we're going to get a timeout, an injured player. While he gets attended to, we'll step aside.
And this will probably be the last play they can squeeze in here before the two-minute warning. Defense always has to be careful in this situation. A lot of teams like to take a shot. Smith throwing again. Over the middle, open is Thomas. And he's brought down after a good game. Fresh set of downs here. Now a first down throw, it's Smith. And this is caught, Jeremy Macklin. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one yard line. And now it looks like they're gonna be in the hurry up. To the air again, Smith. And this is caught now for a late touchdown. So hold everything here. This one's not over yet. And they put it in the end zone, which was job one. Now they have to convert. And then it's decision time, isn't it? Yeah, so this is what all teams go through. You look at the clock, you're inside two minutes. Look at your timeouts. Make that onside kick decision. Yeah, how do you feel about your defense, where you are in terms of the scoreboard, and the time left on the clock, as you noted? So many things to go through. After the touchdown, here's Santos to kick this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is, do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one possession game. This one not fully over yet. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. Now here's a defensive timeout called by the Chiefs. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. And he'll lose you. And the Chiefs are going to signal for and be granted another timeout. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. Third down, here's Williams. And he'll get nothing out of that one. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. Here's Jordan Berry now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. <laughs> Look at the spin. Balance. 
That'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And it's Chiefs football, first and 10. And now here comes Kansas City. They're down here in a one-score game. At the time, it's a factor, but it's not a huge factor right now, is it? It's really not because this amount of time gives them a chance to run their offense, to go through play sequences. And this is what they work on every week in practice, usually on a Friday. They go over this type of a situation, late game situation. What are we going to do when we have the opportunity? They've called these plays a bunch of times. Now's their chance to execute them. Yeah, they have the opportunity now. Here's the execution. Ten yards still left on second down. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. He'll look to throw. The tight end, Kelsey, has it over the middle. And he's brought down. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Back to throw. He's got time. Out to the right here to Wilson. And he's brought down after a good game. A really good pickup of 28 yards. They'll come up with split backs in the backfield. And now the spike with 36 seconds left to go. Thomas, the lone receiver left. to throw and this is caught at the eight it's a really nice 15 yard pickup and now it's first and goal well how about keeping your head about you in this situation no more timeouts finds a way to get out of bounds now they can breathe a little bit as they contemplate what to do on the next down in the red zone this time they come up in an empty set four wide receivers one tight end They'll look to throw. This will be caught at about the five. And he takes this into the end zone for a Chiefs touchdown. Demetrius Harris with time running out. And the Chiefs are an extra point away from tying up this football game. And while it appears the heavy lifting was accomplished by scoring the touchdown, they're still down one. That extra point is not a gimme. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. The Steelers' offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. They have a little bit of time here to get into field goal range. Not much. A tie game, you don't want to do anything crazy, right? I agree with you on that one. Risk-reward, okay? If you go for it, what is the absolute reward on this? But the risk is probably greater. Run the clock out, get to overtime, and try and win it there. All right, we'll see if they do just that. Roethlisberger with a give. It's Williams. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. It's a guy carrying the ball. Your eyes are going to direct your feet and you're hoping they carry you to the open spaces. But it's awfully difficult at times because you have so many things you have to look out for. Where's the line blocking? Where's the traffic coming from? Tough to find open spots. And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. 
But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and it gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. And last year, that would have been a net gain of five on the return. This year, he stopped where he would have been if he had taken a knee, and that's at the 25. The Chiefs offense now making their way back onto the field, except for their first drive here in overtime, and this is where the crowd can really become a factor. They've had to battle it all day, but I know what you're saying. In overtime, that gets doubled, doesn't it, at least, because now the crowd really wants to be involved and help their team, and that first drive can dictate the whole thing because they know if this team takes it downfield and scores a touchdown, it's game over. It's been loud in here so far. Mike Mitchell coming up from the secondary to make the stop. Not a big run on the first play of the drive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it was a bad play. Sometimes you're just trying to settle in, get your guys a little bit of contact, and get things moving. throw here in overtime for Smith. Finding time. And now the ball's loose. Smith loses it. And the offense now will try to regroup after the sack on second down. And they'll add a DB in the secondary here on third and 14. Now a first throw here in overtime. And Wilson has it. And he's brought down after a good game. And they're able to convert on third with a solid gain of 23. He went full scale, loose, flexible, finding a way to catch the ball in some traffic for a key first down. Yeah, really a nice job of adjusting to the ball in the air. Not the most accurate of throws, but able to adjust and make the grab. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. And he continues to pile up the yardage. That puts him over a buck 50 now. And this defense has really had its problems trying to keep him contained. Second down to the offense in search of six yards. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. He's had a big game tonight. While no one's going to be overly concerned about that last play, you also know that the offense coordinator does not want to see that happen again. They want to get back to doing what they've been doing all game long. So a third and nine, and six defensive backs out there in the dime. Patrolling the passing lanes to throw with Smith, surveying the field. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. It'll be a three-yard gain, and that'll bring up fourth down. Here's Dustin Colquitt now, on for a very important punt here in overtime. Here's Dustin Colquitt now, as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. He gets this away. It's a good one, drawing toward the sidelines. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted. And spotted at the 14-yard line. Out comes the Steeler offense now, ready to see what they can do here. Their defense did its job, got the stop. All they need is three, and this is over. Couldn't have done much else other than score themselves and end it. But they turned it back over to them, and now all they need is a field goal to win the game. An excellent job by the defense. Can the offense finish things off? Yeah, part one is done, now part two. His throw here is incomplete. Antonio Brown, the intended receiver. And that'll make it second and ten. When you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Here we go. Second and ten. It's Roethlisberger once more. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. 
And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. They go play action here on first down. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. Again, we'll see the pistol here. On second down, Williams. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. He'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. The defense won that play so fast that I think if the running back even had time to notice if anyone was there, it was just a blink of an eye, and there was a loss on the play. Yeah, they've got an extra defensive back out there now right, on third and 13. Right, They'll fake the give to Williams. Now it's Roethlisberger. He's got time in the pocket, and that is incomplete. Good job by the O-line quarterback. Had time to go through his checks. That's one you need to take advantage of. A perfect situation, and they're unable to take advantage of it. When you have that much time to scan the field, you have to find an open receiver. Here's Jordan Berry now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Fielded at the 20. <laughs> A very good return there. Give him an even 20 yards. And the offense will come back onto the field for the first and 10. And now here comes Kansas City. Neither team scored yet. Now we go to sudden death. Next points win this game. How about the tension right now? It is ratcheted up, isn't it? I mean, now whatever happens, points are scored. That's your ball game. Can't wait to see the defense now. Do they get a little more aggressive? in order to not let a team just drive the ball easily down the field. Got to be careful, though, right? Yeah, if you're too aggressive, you just give up something to eat. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. And now here comes Kansas City. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Second down to the offense needing five yards. They run. Charles. <laughs> And he's brought down. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Really good, skillful, tough running throughout this contest. Picked up first down after first down. He's got to have a nickname, doesn't he? How about the human first down machine? I think that fits. So it'll be first down here after the run. Now a play fake here on first down. He's got Wilson, middle of the field. And he's brought down. It'll go as a gain of 12. Good enough for a Kansas City first down. So here's Cairo. And the Steelers signal for another timeout. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. So here's Cairo Santos on the field goal try. This to win it in overtime. And he got it. The 
kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. And they 